without going into the details of the Nazis' relation to the occult and how the Nazis really were a cult and a secret society, I'll put it to you this way. The Nazis and every other secret society and cult, by my definition, at its core was composed of artists. Oh yeah, big time. Perverse artists whose ambition was to create a universe of art that would seduce individuals in large numbers to want to take up residence in that space, that mural, that painting, that world, that universe as the most important space, the primary space, the holiest and most sacred of spaces, the ultimate space, the only space. It was art. It was imagination operating. It was not simply hideous, oppressive power. In many cases, it was that also. And of course, I'm not trying to minimize or minimize the, the coercion factor. But at the root, it was a lot more than that. At the root, it was art constructed by the imagination of perverse artists who had the agenda of the secret society, which was to control and dominate others. And what better way to control and dominate others than by, and try to wrap your mind around this, the imaginative creation of a wonderful space infiltrated by various energies and entities and patterns that would be extremely attractive to humans and draw them closer and make them want to, as it were, sign on. That was an explosion in my mind that discovery. Because of course, we're talking about a two-sided coin here. This has never really been articulated well before. And so, I hope that you're tracking with me here. I'm spelling it out lucidly. You see, you have tremendous inner capacity called creative imagination. And that creative imagination can make for you by your using it. It's not some independent thing that just operates on its own. It's you in operation creating makes for you futures that you want, events. It gives you a wider scope of the planet. It gives you a sense of being able to contribute to the change of this planet for the better. It operates on the level of personal finance and abundance. It operates on the level of health in being able to up your level of health considerably. It operates in the level of consciousness and the raising of consciousness into realms that we have used words for like enlightenment and uh, salvation, if you want to get into a religious uh, mode and so forth. It has just tremendous capacity. Capacity we don't even begin to understand because we as a race, we as a species, have bought in to Ticka, 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 tick. Let me live in your space. Let me live in the space created by the Vatican. Let me live in that heaven populated by many entities. Let me live in a space in which we have marvelous ranks and echelons and hierarchies of power and dominion and authority. Let me live in a space, let's return to Nazi Germany, end of World War I, 
money in wheelbarrows, unable to buy bread, the humiliation of the German people thinking they were going to conquer Europe, and here they are rooting around in the rubble, and here comes the Nazi regime building on many other little cults and secret societies and painting a marvelous cult mural for the German people. A space, a universe that consisted of the totally bogus scholarship that the German people had in a special elite past that began in the Arctic under caves of ice Germanic giants, the Teutons, the Aryan race, arose with great third eye psychic powers and great physical strength and sailed out from the Arctic and conquered the world in as far away realms as India, Tibet, the Americas. And it was only these artists, Nazi artists, said, by the incautious sexual joining of the Germanic, Teutonic, Aryan, pure-blooded race with the lesser races, that their powers were lost. And it was the mission of the Nazi party to reestablish this by war, genocide, etc. And this played, as they say, for the German people in the 1930s. This mural played. A space had been created. This was not simply the coercion of Adolf Hitler. This was the perverse inspiring through art that seduced the German people into a space called Nazism and all that it implied. And the main thing that it implied, as it turned out, was the giving up of each individual's own creative imagination. The subliminal surrendering of this tremendous capacity to create on one's own. That's what it entailed, and that's what happened. Because if you look at Lenny Reifenstahl's film called Triumph of the Will, a perverse masterpiece of its own, which covered the 1934 Nuremberg rally, what do you see? You see a couple of hundred thousand Germans lined up as soldiers, workers with shovels, and children with banners in squared up regiments as far as the eye can see. And on a podium, on top of a stage, on top of a platform, on top of elevations artistically constructed by Albert Speer, the master architect of Hitler, there was Hitler and Himmler addressing what? This field of ciphers, of nobodies, of people ready to lay down their lives and die for Hitler. The transition from, we will make you into a god, you live in our mural, and we will restore to you the special ability and the marvelous power of the past Germanic race. And once everybody had signed on, what did they get? Robothood. That's what they got. They got no imagination. They got the loss, the burial of their own creative capacities. 